Hey there, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2. My name is Pete, and today we complete another short assignment, which will actually be the last mission we can complete before the game forces another main storyline mission on us. After the completion of our mission on Horizon, where we ran into the Collectors for the first time, the game started a hidden 5 mission countdown, and since then we have completed the recruitment missions for Thane and Samara, as well as the loyalty mission for Miranda, and the slightly shorter captured mining facility assignment in the last episode. That means we now have room for only one more mission, and we're not going to do anything fancy for this one, instead we'll complete one more quick assignment, just so we don't have too many of them left at the end of this playthrough. Before we jump into that mission, however, we have a message to read and a short conversation to complete, and as always, I have fed the fish in between episodes so we don't have to take care of that anymore. Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. Right, so we have received one new message, and it was sent by Detective Anaya, the Asari detective on Ilium who had her troubles with Samara, and who we helped out a bit by recruiting Samara to our cause. In this message, she once again thanks us for our support, and she also mentions that the Eclipse mercenaries around the area have been pretty quiet lately, which is of course not surprising considering how we took out a sizable number of them. Apart from that, however, we find nothing of particular interest in this message, so let's close it again and then have a brief conversation with Kelly Chambers. Morden's psych profile warned of hyper behavior, but he is like a hamster on coffee. He's going to be a very productive member of the team. Anyway. What's up? That'll be all. Take care. Right, that was actually already all I wanted to get out of her. Next time we'll talk to her though, we'll have a few more options, but we'll get to that at the end of the episode. For now, we can jump into the galaxy map and leave the Zelene system as well as the Crescent Nebula behind. We still have two unexplored systems here, so we'll come back eventually. For now though, we can travel over to the Pylos Nebula, because as a result of buying some star charts on Ilium, we now have a map marker here that calls for our help to save a crashing ship. So let's fly over there and see what we can do to help. We now arrive in the first of four systems in this nebula. However, this one only has two planets and then the crashing ship itself. And the first of these planets is the ice giant Jonas, however, for mining purposes it can safely be skipped. The planet only has moderate mineral deposits and no element zero, and unfortunately the same is true for Isolay, the second planet in the system as well. This gas giant once again does not excite anyone looking for rich mineral deposits, so all in all I would not recommend this system for your scanning efforts. Keep in mind, by the way, that the entire nebula can only be accessed after you have purchased the star charts on Ilium, so if you have not done so, you will miss out on a total of four systems and two assignments. And the first of these assignments takes place on board of the MSV Broken Arrow, a ship that is currently in the process of crashing onto the planet below. Our scans also reveal that the Geth are apparently on board, and we actually haven't had a lot of trouble with them yet in this series, so their presence is indeed a bit surprising. Still, let's board and see if we can't avoid disaster. With the Geth also on the ship, it makes sense to bring some anti-synthetic specialists. In our case, let's take Garrus and Kasumi. Both have access to Overload and Garrus's long-range weaponry also comes in handy. All in all though, the opposition won't be too difficult in this mission. Once again, we won't spend any squad points on Shepard until the next level up. With Kasumi, however, we have 7 of them, so let's use 5 to get Overload up to level 3. It then makes sense to save the remaining two to eventually max out an Evolve Overload, so we won't spend any more. Garrus, meanwhile, is fully spec'd out for his current level, so we're ready to go now. Our weapon loadout will stay exactly as it is. Alright, interesting little mechanic here, this mission works on a timer, so we have a bit less than 6 minutes now to avoid the crash. The captain's log on the ground here then reveals a bit more about what led to the situation, even though the first log entry here is just a yellow alert and so nothing too concerning. It already mentions the risk of running into Geth this far out, but nothing yet of their actual presence. It does, however, also reveal that the ship has 100 crates of military-grade weaponry on board, another reason why it's probably a good idea to save it from crashing. The second entry then is the red alert and it's brief and to the point. The crew apparently did run into some geth, and surprise surprise, they were not friendly. 
It's also mentioned here that the Geth should have had no trouble taking over the ship, and from what we saw earlier, it seems like that is exactly what happened. The final entry then confirms our suspicion. At this point, the crew had already been evacuated, and it's also revealed that it was in fact the captain himself who disabled the ship's engines. It seems though like he did not survive long enough to actually oversee where the ship would land, as it is now on collision course with a colony on Jonas, maybe even the exact same colony that the weapon shipment was meant for. In any case, I would say our task is laid out for us, and since we have no access to the doors on the left and right here, let us quickly bypass our way through the one in front of us. Opening the door reveals a trio of Geth troopers, but thanks to two overloads and superior firepower, they don't stand much of a chance. Once the fight is over, we want to grab the contents of the medical station over on the left, and then we have to override the emergency seal of the engine room, otherwise we will obviously not be able to access the ship's engines. On the console right next to it, we can then access the ship's status report, however, as you can see, the situation is dire. Navigation, life support and engine are all offline damaged or disabled, and the ship's hull has been breached as well, so yeah, things are not looking good at all. The engines at least, however, are something that we can take care of, but before we do, let's grab the first of two Iridium containers on this mission, and then, with roughly five minutes remaining on the countdown, we can switch over to the sniper rifle. Up next, we then actually already have the engine room, and Kasumi and Garrus will take up a slightly elevated position here, while we make our way downstairs and into cover. It doesn't take long until the next wave of enemies appears, and this is where the precision of the sniper rifle pays off. The Geth will now attack our position from the two balconies on the left and right, and for the moment, all we can do is to stay put and to take them out, while the timer continues to tick down. Most of the enemies are standard Geth troopers, but there's also a rocket trooper among them demanding extra attention, otherwise it can do loads of damage. Once this first group is defeated and there is a break in the action, we can run over to the power coupling behind us and activate it to begin reactivating the engine. Once the blue bar is filled and the device turns blue, we can move on, grab the second Iridium container on the left here, and then dash over to the other side and behind cover. By now, a second wave of Geth has arrived, and once again we need to thin out their numbers until we can make a break for the next power coupling. Meanwhile, our squad members will stay right where they are. Down on the ground, they are very prone to getting killed by the enemies above them. These Geth waves will spawn forever, by the way, so defeating them is not really possible. A quick break is all we get before the next wave arrives. However, a quick break is also all we need to activate the second power coupling, and at this point, with more than three minutes remaining, we have all we need. Yes, there are more enemies shooting at us, but we can safely ignore them and run up to the engine control panel. We are safe from enemy fire here and can take our time with the bypassing minigame, and once completed, the engines restart and the ship is saved. The mission summary then mentions that, for some reason, the remaining Geth have disengaged, so we have indeed saved the colony from a catastrophic impact. We are rewarded with 125 experience points, 7,500 credits and 2,000 units of Iridium. Not bad at all for a mission that took us a little less than 3 minutes. Back on the Normandy then, things look as usual. However, as we try to access the galaxy map, we can see and hear that something has changed. Change of plans, Commander. The elusive man wishes to speak to you in the debriefing room, Commander. And yes indeed, at this point we have no other option but to continue with the main storyline mission I mentioned earlier. But before we do, let's have one more conversation with Kelly. There is nothing more absolute than the oath of an Asari Justicar. You did well getting Samara on our side. She is so elegant and gorgeous. Too bad her manner is just so... cold. And since we have been a bit more forward with Kelly in the past, let's continue down that path and see where it leads. I didn't recruit her for her looks. The Normandy already has you, Kelly. Oh, Shepard. I wish there were time to get to know you better. We could now keep things hypothetical and decline the offer, or we could actually offer something of our own. 
And not only is that the more interesting option, but it also gives us morality points, so let's do it. Why don't you join me in my cabin for a meal? It would give us the chance to talk. That sounds wonderful. I've been hoping for some private time with you. Lead the way. Goodness. I haven't stayed up that late since my college days. I had a wonderful evening. Thank you, Shepard. Alright, it was just the dinner, nothing more, but we still receive 5 Paragon and 5 Renegade points for it, and we're now on friendlier terms with Kelly. We'll see how things develop with her from here on out. For now, though, we can only do one more thing, and that is to head over to the comm room. And that is also where we will end today's episode. In the next one, we will then see what the elusive man wants from us, but for today, we can make the cut right here. As always, I hope you enjoyed the episode, and if you did, then I would be happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you want to support me and my channel further, then you can subscribe if you haven't already. Alternatively, you can, of course, also support the Peak Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.